Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of my family's all-time favorite casserole dishes. We absolutely love making casseroles in my family just because they're so, so simple to throw together. You could include your proteins, veggies, starches, anything like that, throw it into your casserole dish, put it in the oven, and then dinner is served. Also, casseroles are great for a larger amount of people. So as you can probably tell, I love making casseroles. But anyways, I really hope you enjoy this video and I hope you're doing well, but let's go get to cooking. To get us kicked off today, we're gonna to be making this chicken tamale casserole, and don't even get me started. It is so, so good. I pretty much make it to every family gathering. It's that good. But anyways, to this large bowl, I just added an eight and a half ounce package of some Jif corn muffin mix, a 14 ounce can of creamed corn, half a cup of milk, two large eggs, and then of course, you're probably gonna to wanna to add some seasonings. So the seasonings I chose to use is just a teaspoon of chili powder and a half a teaspoon of cumin. Next, you're gonna add a cup of some sharp cheddar cheese shredded and then whisk everything together. I pulled out my 9x13 baking dish and now I'm just spraying it with plenty of some nonstick spray. You're going to add that mixture right in there, spread it out as even as possible. Then you're going to place this in a preheated oven to 400 degrees to bake for 20 minutes. While I do have that in the oven baking, I'm going to start on the red chili enchilada sauce and chicken mixture. So I have two cups of shredded chicken. I just boiled it up in my Instant Pot, shredded it that way. Or you could use a rotisserie chicken for this recipe, whatever your preference is. And to that shredded chicken, I added a 10 ounce can of some red chili enchilada sauce. And I'm going to combine these two ingredients together. So now that my cornbread mixture is out of the oven, I'm just going to pour the red chili enchilada sauce and the chicken over the top and then I'm going to cover it with an additional cup and a half of some cheese. This is going to bake in the oven for an additional 20 minutes. This is my plate of food. I just topped it with plenty of some guacamole, sour cream, jalapenos, cherry tomatoes, lettuce, and lime. I absolutely love this recipe. I especially love how easy it is to throw together compared to making actual tamales. This has some great flavor. Now we're making this chicken stuffing bake and this takes me right back to my childhood. My mom made this for me all of the time when I was growing up. To this medium sized bowl, I'm adding a can of cream of mushroom and a can of cream of chicken. If you don't care for one or the other or either, you could add any type of cream of soup to this recipe and it will seriously turn out great. I added a fourth a cup of milk and you're gonna whisk these ingredients to combine. To my large round casserole dish, or you could use a nine by 13 baking dish, I sprayed it with plenty of nonstick spray. Then I added two pounds of some chicken tenderloins, or you could use thin chicken breasts. I seasoned the chicken tenderloins with salt and pepper on each side. And then I added the cream of soup mixture on top and spread it out as even as possible. In my personal opinion, I have found that the stovetop chicken stuffing is the best to use for this recipe. I've used other stuffings in the past, like the Great Value, but I always go back to the stovetop brand just because I think it has the best flavor and it cooks the best for this recipe. After I added the stuffing all over the top, I'm adding a half a cup of chicken broth. This is gonna bake covered in the oven on 375 for 40 minutes, uncover it and bake it for an additional 10. Here's my plate of food. I served this with some asparagus. This came out fantastic. I forgot to mention that I typically add a layer of some sharp cheddar cheese slices um, before the stuffing. I didn't do it on this particular day because I was out of cheese, but that makes it extra delicious. Now we're making some lasagna. I love the amount of food that lasagna makes. You could freeze half of it or save some for leftovers the next day. To my large pot with a tablespoon of olive oil in it, I added a pound of some sausage, or you could use a pound of ground beef. I do prefer sausage for lasagna because it does add some more flavor. I added one diced onion and I'm going to cook this sausage completely through. Once it is cooked through, I'm going to remove any of the excess grease. If you've been on my channel for a while, you probably 
probably know, the way I remove my grease is just by wiggling a paper towel around in there and it absorbs all of it in a pretty speedy amount of time. As you can see, all of the grease is gone. Now I'm just adding a couple teaspoons of some minced garlic and a fourth a cup of vegetable broth. I'm going to stir this around until the vegetable broth pretty much reduces down to nothing. The remainder of the ingredients that I'm adding into my sausage is just about 24 ounces of some marinara sauce. Use any type of marinara sauce you like. A little bit of some salt and pepper for the seasonings. I'm using about a fourth a teaspoon of some thyme, a teaspoon of parsley and basil. You're going to stir all of this together and let this simmer on your stove covered for about five to 10 minutes. While I have that simmering up on my stove, I'm gonna work on the cheese sauce. So to this medium sized bowl, I added 16 ounces of cottage cheese with 15 ounces of some ricotta cheese. Next, you're gonna add one cup of some mozzarella cheese. I also added a third a cup of Parmesan cheese, one egg, and then to season this up, I'm adding parsley and some basil, about a teaspoon of each of those. Now we're gonna to begin to assemble the lasagna. So to the bottom of a nine by 13 baking dish, you're gonna add about a cup of the meaty marinara sauce mixture. Then I'm gonna add three lasagna noodles on top. I'm using the oven ready lasagna noodles, a total of nine lasagna noodles for this recipe. There's three layers. If you don't care for the oven ready lasagna noodles, you could just use traditional lasagna noodles. I added a layer of the ricotta and cottage cheese mixture. And then to every layer, I added a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. This bakes on 375 for 45 minutes covered with foil. Uncover it and put it under the broiler for an additional three minutes. I served my lasagna with a side salad. I know I said this previously, but I love making big lasagnas because they make for some great leftovers for the next day, or you could actually freeze part of it and save that for a rainy day or when you really just don't feel like making dinner. Now we're gonna be making some hearty pork chops. To get this recipe started, I'm using a can of cream of celery and cream of mushroom. Per usual, you could use any type of cream of soup you like. I added that to my bowl with two cups of some chicken broth and one and a half cups of some long grain white rice. You're also gonna to wanna to add one of these packets of the Lipton onion dry soup mix. Just whisk these ingredients together. Over to my large round baking dish, that's the equivalent to a nine by 13 baking dish. I sprayed it with plenty of nonstick spray. You definitely wanna do that or the rice will stick to the bottom. I added the rice mixture in there and now I'm gonna be adding my five pork chops. You could use between five to eight pork chops for this recipe. I'm going to season them with plenty of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. Cover with some aluminum foil, bake on 350 degrees for about an hour and 15 minutes. Here's my plate of food. The pork chops and rice had some really great flavor. I served it with a side salad. If you're looking for a really quick pork chop recipe, this one might be the one for you. The first time I ever made this beef casserole, I was skeptical, but now my family's hooked. I'm starting out by dicing up one medium-sized white onion and slicing eight ounces of some white mushrooms. Over to my large pot, I have a pound of some ground beef in there. I'm going to season it with plenty of some salt, pepper, and a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning. You're just going to cook this ground beef completely through. Once the ground beef is cooked, just remove it to a separate plate and set that plate to the side. Now we're gonna to begin to work on the onions. To my same large pot, I'm adding two tablespoons of butter. I let that melt down and now I'm gonna add my diced onion and let this cook for about five minutes. Now that my onions are starting to get soft, I'm just adding my two teaspoons of some minced garlic. I'm going to stir the garlic around until it becomes fragrant. For the beef broth, I'm adding two and a half cups of that in with one and a fourth cups of some uncooked white rice. 
To give the rice some extra flavor, I'm adding a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning in. I'm going to give this a really good stir, bring this up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer, and let this simmer covered for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes of cooking, I removed the lid and now I'm going to add our sliced mushrooms in, give this a really good stir, put the lid back on top and cook this for an additional five minutes covered. And then I'm gonna turn the stove off and let this sit covered for an additional 10 minutes. So here it is, after all of that time, you're gonna add back in your cooked ground beef, then add in one can of some cream of mushroom soup, a half a cup of milk, half a cup of sour cream, one cup of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese, cheese and then you're going to stir everything together. I place the casserole in a greased 9 by 13 baking dish. I spread it out as even as possible. Then you're going to add about a cup and a half of some more shredded sharp cheddar cheese on top. You're going to cover this and bake on 350 for about 20 minutes. Remove the foil and bake it for an additional 5 minutes. Here's the finished product. This came out great. I just served it with some steamed peas. This was actually surprisingly one of my little daughter's favorite meals to eat when she was a little bit younger. I do think it's because it tastes good. Also, it was very easy for her to eat. And that is a wrap of this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were able to find a casserole that you might be able to make for yourself. As always, if you are new to my channel, we would absolutely love to have you here. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.